We are going to look at the notion of the dimension of a subset of Rn in the context of polyhedral combinatorics. Let's first take a look at affine subspaces. Suppose that S is an affine subspace. Recall that it is given by P plus V for some P in Rn and some vector subspace V of Rn. From this, we can define the dimension of S as the dimension of the underlying vector space V. So the dimension of S in this case is defined to be equal to the dimension of V. Geometrically, if you look at R2, all one-dimensional vector subspaces in R2 are represented by lines through the origin. And any affine subspace of dimension 1 in R2 is simply represented by a line, not necessarily through the origin. And geometrically, it makes sense to define the dimension of a line to be 1. But what about line segments or other point sets? What we're going to do is, if we are given any subset S of Rn, the dimension of S is defined to be the dimension of the affine half of S. So from this definition, we can see that the dimension of a line segment will be 1 because the affine half of a line segment is simply a line. And the same is true for just two points. The affine half of two points is a line, and so the dimension of a two-point set is going to be 1 as well. We are now going to look at a result on determining the dimension of a set. Let S be a non-empty subset of Rn. Then the dimension of S is given by the largest k such that there exists k plus 1 f finely independent vectors in S. For example, if you look at three points in R2 arranged in a triangle, these can be shown to be f finely independent, and so in this case, k is going to be 2. So let's look at the proof of this. If S consists of only a single element, it's clear that the result holds. So we're going to assume that there are at least two vectors in S. Now, let the f half of S be given by P plus V. And take f finely independent vectors V0 up to Vk from S, where k is as large as possible. Since S has at least two distinct vectors, k is at least one. We are now going to show that the dimension of S is exactly k. From a previous video, we know that these vectors v1 minus v0, v2 minus v0, all the way up to vk minus 0, are linearly independent vectors in v. And what that means is, as a vector space, the dimension of v is at least k. But the dimension of s is defined to be the same as the dimension of v, so the dimension of s is at least k. Now, because k was chosen to be as large as possible, every other vector in s can be written as an f by combination of v0 up to vk. And that means s is contained in an affine subspace of dimension at most k. That implies that the dimension of s is at most k. And so we have inequalities in both directions, therefore the dimension of s is equal to k.